Hi, I'm Abolore. Today's lesson is about the distinction between two concepts in economics, change in quantity demanded and change in demand. Now, before I talk about these two concepts, let's me quickly explain some of the vocab we have here, which uh, we enhance the understanding of these uh, two concepts. Ceteris paribus. Ceteris paribus means all things being equal or everything else held constant, equal, unchanged. For example, there are many factors that affect the quantity demanded for a commodity, such as price of the commodity, price of other commodity, income of the consumer, festive period, the number of buyers, population, and all that. Now, if we are saying or we pick one of the factors, let's say price of the commodity, and we say the lower the price, the higher the quantity demanded, and the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded. This relationship we only hold between price and quantity demanded when we assume that there is variables. That means all other factors that we've mentioned, none of them will change. That means all of them will remain equal. All of them will remain constant for them to be the lower the price the higher the quantity demanded or the higher the price the lower the quantity demanded because if any of the other factors are allowed to change it will distort the normal loss of demand of having inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded so the lower the price the higher the quantity demanded ceteris variables the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded. So there is variables. No other factor, no other factor will be allowed to change or will not change. That's the assumption of ceteris variables. Quantity demanded. Quantity demanded means the amount of a product that people are willing and able to buy at specific prices. So with respect to quantity demanded, we are saying what would be the change in the quantity demanded for a commodity when its price changes? So this is with respect to changing the price of the commodity. That's quantity demanded. So for example, when the price of this marker drops, the quantity demanded of it will increase, set a variable. Or when the price of this marker increases, the quantity of it we decrease, set there is variables. So that's the quantity demanded. So it's, it's explained, which is fair to change in the price of the commodity. So there will be a change in the quantity demanded for a commodity when there is a change in the price of that commodity. So in short, this quantity demanded can be linked to this concept, which is change in quantity demanded. And lastly, we have demand. Demand also means the amount or unit of a commodity that people are willing and able to buy at every possible prices. That means this term, demand, is explained using two goods, that substitute goods or complementary goods. For example, excuse me, if you have these two uh, markers here, they are substitute goods because they give the same satisfaction. The satisfaction that A we give will be the same that the satisfaction that B we give. So increase in the price of this marker will lead to increase in the demand for this blue marker, except there is variables, or decrease in the price of this black marker will lead to decrease in the demand for this blue marker, set there is variables. So notice that I did not say increase in the quantity demanded. I said increase in the demand for this blue marker. So demand is explained using substitute or complementary goods. And the relationship between substitute goods, like you all know, is positive. When the price of one is increasing, the demand for the other will also increase set there is variables or when the price of the other is decreasing the demand for the other substitute will also decrease
case, ceteris paribus. So that switches back to the uh, terminology for today. So I hope uh, that way further your understanding with respect to this. So let's talk about change in quantity demanded. The concept of change in quantity demanded explains the movements along the demand curve due to change in the price of the commodity in question. So what that means is that when the price of a commodity changes, what will be the effect of that on the quantity demanded for that commodity? So the primary factor responsible for change in quantity demanded is the change in the price of the commodity in question. And we are going to be uh, illustrating that on the board. That's the graphical illustration. So let's uh, have that on the board. We have, so remember that this vertical region is your price region and this horizontal region is your quantity demanded. So we have quantity demanded, we have price region. Now let's assume the price of this marker was five naira and the consumer buys, let's say, 80 units of this marker. At five naira, the consumer buys 80 units. Now, we all know that the price of commodities changes. That means it's rise or falls. That's what we mean by change. So let's assume here that the price of this marker drops from five to three. So we have five to three. Now, we all know the normal laws of demand, which states that the lower the price, the higher the quantity demanded, ceteris variable. So the price drops from five to three, and that led to increase in the quantity demanded for this marker, let's say 100 units. And on the contrary, the price of the marker rise, rises from, let's say, five to eight dollar. And here, we're going to be having decrease in the quantity demanded, let's say 50 units. So this is decrease in quantity demanded from 80 to 50, and this is increase in the quantity demanded from 80 to 100. Now, let's have our slope. That's our demand slope. This demand slope is uh, negative. It slopes downward. That means the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded. And the lower the price, the higher the quantity demanded. So don't forget, this is our initial price. Now, let's depict this with A, and let's depict this with B, and here we have C. So Alfred Marshall called these demand points. These are demand points, A, B, C. So this is downward movements that's from H to B and from A to C is upward movement. Now, I did say that change in quantity demanded means the movements along the demand curve. So these movements can be downward or upward. So downward movement means increase in the quantity demanded due to fall in the price of the commodity. So this is falling the price from five to three. That led to increase in the quantity demanded for the marker. That's from 80 to 100. And on the contrary, upward movements in the demand curve means decrease in the quantity demanded. And that's due to increase in the price of the commodity in question. So from five to eight, we have increase in price. And that increase in price had led to decrease in the quantity demanded of this marker. That's from 80 to 50. That's decrease in quantity demanded. So I think that is understood. So change in quantity demanded will give you movements along the demand curve. And that is primarily due to changes in the price of the commodity in question. And when there is changes in the price of the commodity in question, quantity demanded also changes. Decrease in price, Increase in quantity demanded. Increase in price, decrease in quantity demanded. Ceteris paribus. So let's talk about the second uh, concept, which is 
uh, change in demand. Change in demand, before I explain it, I have to emphasize for your better understanding that there are many factors that affect demand. I'll be mentioning the price of the commodity, price of other commodities, income of the consumer, taste preference and habit of the consumer, the number of buyers, future expectation, population, festive period, and all other factors. Now, the concept of change in demand explains that demand curve can shift to the right or to the left. When any of these factors, aside price of the commodity, is allowed to change or changes, let's say, for example, I'll be using the number of buyers. When the number of buyers for a particular commodity increases, there will be what? Increase in the demand for that commodity. And on the contrary, when the number of buyers for a particular commodity decreases, you will have the demand for that commodity to decrease. And increase in the demand for that commodity means right worship. And decrease in the demand for that commodity means left worship or in worship. So, Change in demand is primarily responsible by change in any one of the external or other factors that affect demand, why the price of the commodity remain constant or equal or unchanged. So let's depict this change in demand on the curve for your better understanding. So we have, so this still remains our price region that is the vertical axis we have price and we have the quantity region which is the horizontal axis so the price of the market assumption we have ten dollar is ten dollar and at this ten dollar the consumers buy let's say 150 units of the marker or of a particular group now we have to draw our initial demand uh, slope which is d naught we have D naught. Now, let's say the uh, the number of buyers for this commodity in question, let's say marker, increases. Let's say we now have more teachers. The more teachers we need to buy markers in order for them to use in the class to teach their students. So if the number of teachers increases, it will increase the number of buyers for this marker. And that we shift the demand curve to the right. So you are going to be having something like this. So we have a new demand curve, which is D1, D1. So this is increase in demand for the marker due to increase in the number of buyers, which happens to be the teacher in this case. So when the number of buyers for a particular commodity increases, you are going to be having outward shift or right worship in the demand curve. So right worship in the demand curve means increase in the demand for the commodity. And on the contrary, when the number of buyers for a particular commodity decreases, you'll be having the demand for that commodity to decrease. So let's say, for example, there are not many teachers in the teaching profession, and that means there are not many teachers. That means the, the, the limited or the few teachers that are available will use less marker to teach their students in the class. So that would decrease the demand for markers. So that decrease in the demand for markers is called in worship or left worship in the demand for that commodity. So you are going to be having, let's label this D2, and we have D2. So increase in uh, demand, we have, let's say this is 200 units. And here, this is increase. This is decrease from 150 to, let's say, 100 units. So you can see now, the price of the commodity doesn't change. There are other factors. And this fa the factor we're emphasizing here is the number of buyers. So when the number of buyers decreases, you have decrease in the demand for that commodity. Notice I did not say decrease in the quantity demanded because the price doesn't change yet. If it is the effect of price, we have decrease in the quantity demanded. But here, we are having decrease in demand 
not decreasing quantity of the mandate because the price doesn't change. The price remain equal or constant or unchanged. So that's the distinction between the two concepts uh, in economics. But before I drop off this conversation, just a quick summary on the two. So change in quantity demanded is also called the movement along the demand curve due to change in the price of the commodity in question or due to change in the commodity's own price. So when the price decreases, you have quantity demanded to increase and that's downward movement in the demand curve. And when the price increases, you have upward movement in the demand for that curve. An upward movement in the demand curve is called decrease in the quantity demanded. So this is the effect of changing the price of the commodity. So change in quantity demanded means the price of the commodity changes, but other factors remain constant, such as variables. And change in demand means shift in the demand curve either to the right or to the left due to change in one of the other factors why the price of the commodity remain constant. So right to shift in the demand curve means increase in demand. Why left to shift in the demand curve means decrease in the demand for that commodity. So I will, uh, that is understood. So uh, at this juncture, I want to say a big thanks to everyone at Echo Plaza Boy, we love to teach and as you love to listen and learn. And I want to employ everyone that has uh, been supporting so far. You can always share our videos to friends and relatives. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe. Click the notification bell. And each time we have a video, that will come straight directly to you, perhaps on your smartphones or your laptops and your desktops and every other gadget you use. And lastly, quote for today, spend less of your scarce means on your wants and spend more of your scarce means on your needs. Because if you do not economize, one might agonize. So I think uh, uh, spending uh, less on your wants I mean, spending less of your scarce means on your want and spending more of your scarce means on your uh, needs will kind of uh, save you from trouble. Yeah. So kudos to everyone for having stuck with me this far. I think the fact that you stuck with me this far means you like this video. So why don't you push the like uh, button? Let's have your comments uh, on our comment section of the video. And let's uh, feed you back on that. So thank you all once more for having stuck with me. I'll see you on my next video. Do have a good one. Bye-bye.